hell of beautiful people. It's about 4.23 a.m. in the morning. It is after I have just recorded the video um, talking about why the U.S. government is stalking me. And how I've gotten my memory back about the time travel. Well, this video is specifically for the Stargate program and the people that are part of the program that have been fighting the Sith. Most people think the Sith is something that George Lucas made up and it's a fairy tale. Well, it actually is a genetic abomination that was designed to control and kill the human race. For what we know as evil, dark side, you can call it whatever. Now I'm going to explain this process to you, but mainly this is for scientists. For now and in the future so you will know. First of all, I'm going to start by explaining the things that kill the Sith. The number one thing that kills Siths are things of sanitary um, chemistry. Things such as Lysol. Things such as um, anything that is antibacterial. The thing is getting it into the cell. My suggestion is to develop some sort of teleportation gun to where it teleports directly past their shielding, which is not that advanced, and directly into them because the Sith, if you're dealing with the mechanical, biological, um, nanos they are heavily armored on the outside but on the inside that's where the Sith little goo demon sits um, controlling the whole situation um, any makeup of herbs and crystals that really um, are designed to heal the body. Any genetic makeup that is of high volume. Now what I mean by high volume is sorry I'm still sick from the last attack. I'll explain to you how they how it works in a minute. But this is an ongoing thing. I get poisoned by them daily. Um, normally this poison would normally kill a person. So I want you to understand um, about garlic. Purple garlic. Um, researching Chinese medicine. And the remedies for the thing we know as goo poison because these are the things that the Sith use and the nanotechnology part is, is it's a shielding but once it gets into your system or attaches itself to your bones or into your bloodstream it releases the poison 
So specifically, I'm going to explain the process of what the SIP does. It attaches itself to your brain stem first, first of all. And then what it does is it starts to communicate with your brain to see if you have other Sith encoding or messages or recordings, which most of humanity does. Because at some time and point, they've been poisoned. And it sits lying dormant in your system. So, what it starts to do is it looks for the last messages that the last Sith of its generation left in your brain and encoding, in your brain tissue, or what the CIA uses, CIA mind caps, they, the CIA heavily uses this, the Sith. Um, so what it actually does, if you're an ex-agent like me, and Stargator, or went through the Stargate and Project Montauk, we have specific um, triggers that were put in us by the CIA because we developed, we, um, or they developed, ways of controlling us when we weren't going through the Stargate to off worlds, when we had to be triggered. Now, what I mean by triggered is they built mechanisms in our brain that would basically go on and off and have a digital coding for on and digital coding for off but we all know with computers on and off is 1010 it's the same on off switch and digital encode so in a nutshell that's basically what the CIA and NSA um, do with their assassins and whoever you know programs mind control assassins so when they would trigger us on off worlds but you gotta understand they would use goo poison to do this and so the Sith has always been behind the project it's always known and so this is why the CIA uses the basically the same genetic makeup a poison as the Sith. So when an off-worlder would go and meet up with a Sith um, and they would be in a compromising position to where they'd have to battle a Sith, um, the Sith could immediately take them over through their triggers. That's how the CIA designed everything because the CIA and NSA is, is with them. It's being controlled by the Sith. I mean, I know this because obviously I went through deprogramming and I deprogrammed myself. And the only way I was able to combat these things was to understand what it was and what first started it was understanding what goo poison is. Goo poison is an ancient Chinese poison that, you know, people would use to poison Chinese masters and take control of people's minds, turn them into sex slave zombies, make them incoherent, and then if continually poisoned with this poison they would die. This is in Chinese medicine, you can look it up. It is called GU poison. I've talked about it, I've written articles about it, I will post the article about it under this. So once you start to understand that is what the CIA uses for mind triggers, you will understand um, how important garlic is, and things that actually heal the body. There are many Chinese remedies, but I really didn't use any of them to do my deprogramming because I wanted to keep it simple. Now, one of the things that the Sith do have is they have a demon, or another Sith called an adapter. 
Now, what this demon is designed to do is it's designed to go into your system and adapt to whatever you use against it. Now, it is very tricky, but at the same time, I want you to understand that it is a demon and it is based on goo poison and the same Sith poison. So anything of sanitary nature will kill it. But the thing is, what science needs to do is take, say, the mathematical form or the, the chemical form of Lysol and turn it into a digital form so it can be digitalized and made into somewhat of a sanitary virus because this will work, it will work more than perfectly. There will be, once this happens and once science starts to understand this, nothing will stop humanity and humanity will be free. And the thing with, um, the beautiful thing is, it's already started. And see, there's things like the Rife, which they have parasitical frequencies, but these frequencies need to be amplified and, and really focused into a really strong beam. And, and with the Rife technology and the Rife frequencies, anything can be synthesized into a frequency. It just needs to be amplified. So once scientists, the scientists that have been fighting the Sith for the U.S. government really start to understand the process that I'm explaining right now, humanity will be free. Humanity is already free because I've done the best that I can to clear out what I can, but not only out of me, but out of the subconscious of, of, of the world, like consciously doing this. Um, so let me go back to explain the process of what the Sith does. They attack the brain, attach the brain stem, start communicating, then they go down to the subconscious because the subconscious is connected to the brain and they usually do this through the kundalini. Um, the kundalini part of the chakra is where they really sit. This is the, the Sith's throne over the humans. This is why the kundalini sign is the snake wrapped around the spine. So literally this is what they do. They attach themselves to the brainstem, which the brainstem is connected to the spine, and go all the way down the spine and to the kundalini and start their um, sort of taking over of the human body and mind with the brain and the kundalini. Now what I want you to understand is every human through CIA Hollywood that was taken over by the Sith, by George Lucas, because George Lucas, he killed my father. He is like the, the top of this shit. Him and his wicked son, Chris. Because my father was the original um, architect for the lightsaber. That's why they killed him and they even used time travel to do it. Um, so I want you to understand the whole process. So once they go down into the subconscious, then they start accessing the recorder. And I, I call it a recorder because it is the record of all human thought, what you've done, what you've eaten, blah, 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 stuff like this. And then they'll go from there and say if it's an agent like me, an ex-agent of theirs who they took as a kid and started programming, um, what it'll do to get me back under control is it'll go to my kitchen. It'll send a little goo demon to the kitchen and try to put hexes 
and curses on the food. And so the hex and the curse will affect me directly in the food that's in my system because the body needs nutrition, but if that nutrition is hexed and cursed, again, you become submitted to the goo poison and they have more control of you. This is basically the basis of, of the Chinese medicine goo poison. What I'm explaining is just a more scientific way of, of what the goo poison and the demons do. And um, I want people to understand that there is hope. That's why I'm doing this video because I want people to understand the process of what goes on with the food. Now another thing that I want you to understand is the barcode. What the U.S. government, with the cooperation of the Sith, have done. The barcode is a numerical curse. Now, when I mean numerical curse, I mean literally the barcode adds up to 666. So, say you have some, like I drank some um, almond soy milk or almond, um, almond chocolate milk. So, say I didn't take the almond chocolate milk out of the container that I bought it in because it has a barcode on it and I put it in the bottle. Now what I want you to understand is it's very important for you to go through your home and destroy all your barcodes when you purchase something. This is a must. People really need to start doing this because these demonic entities along with the US government have created a way to, to continuously curse you and put a goo demon in your system. So how do they do this? Well, how does demonic possession work? The old saying is a witch cannot enter your home unless you say the witch come on in. Or a vampire can't enter your home without you saying the vampire come on in. So what they've done is they've designed a way to trick the human um, psyche and soul to accepting this by saying come on in. How do they do it? They did it with the barcode because you want that food, right? You need that food, right? You want to eat? Okay, well accept this barcode, this, this curse, and I'll give you some food. And for that food, I, I get to um, take control of your soul and feed off your essence through that food. This is the barcode, this is what the US government has backed and it is doing literally with with everyone and anyone that uses the barcode everyone's like oh the microchip is the mark of the beast no it's not people it is the second stage of it because the the even the barcode is going i mean excuse me even the microchip the rdif chip even has a barcode now you have Google trying to design barcodes, barcode tattoos, to secure your telephone. Once that happens, that's going to give demons direct access into your body. So I want you to understand the whole process of what I go through every day. And even with me taking the barcodes off my food, it's to the point where these demons, you know, they don't even follow their own rules. So, I mean, but since when, when did they ever anyway? They are psychopathic and they don't even follow real science. I mean, 
that's what psychopaths are. That's what these Nazis are. So I want you to understand these things really need to be dealt with and shut down because they're on the verge of ripping apart our universe. That's their purpose. They don't want anything to live. They don't even want to live. Because the, the little demons that they've created, the U.S. government has created the digital ones, even they have no purpose. They have no soul. They just follow orders, one and zero, one and zero, on, off, on, off. That's it. They have no purpose. And then the U.S. government goes and, and clones these psychopaths or inject the psychopathic minds of these people, say, Lucas's son is the number one government agent that has been put on me to stalk me because he was put on me by his father because his father is honestly too busy and the whole Lucas everything is going to be his. So in order for, for me and the truth not to come out, he, he's been on me since, you know, since they killed my father since I was a little kid. Then he's another person that is part of the Stargate program and Project Montauk. Always has been. But he knows about it. He's conscious of it. He's an enforcer and a handler. He is my silent enforcer and handler. And then they have the physical handlers and enforcers that are put around me that show their face. But the real ones, the Sith behind them, I know who they are too. Lucas and his son. So I want you to understand um, scientists that are out there. Um, these things can be killed. Synthesize and study um, all healing herbs. Oh. Let me go through the, the name of the demons that they use so people can look them up because they're recorded and they can be destroyed. And even you might need to work with white witches to do it, but still, nevertheless, they can be destroyed. I mean, synthesizing the things that they use to destroy these things, this is, these are the things that they use. First of all, there's the adapter demon that was designed to adapt to basically anything that I use against wickedness. It's a stupid little piece of shit because actually it doesn't really make any sense. It's just designed to do one thing, one zero, one zero. It's not really adapting. What it actually does is it goes into the brain and it shuts down whatever um, evolution might represent a threat to the dark side or the evil or whatever you want to call it. So first of all, there's the adapter demon. Then there's the connector demon that goes around connecting all the parts when, whenever the situation or whenever they sense something is wrong with their timeline, or whenever they need to connect the dots, connectors like the detective and the detective demon, and figures out what happened here and here and here, and that's basically about it. So, now I want you to understand um, there's the connector demon, there's the tin demon, that's George Lucas' son. He has his own little demon um, called Tin. His name is Christian, but his code name is Chris Tin. He is basically the, the, the controller, the sorcerer, the, the big demonic entity over the majority of this shit. Because he's been ciphering so much of my essence 
and my my actual knowledge from me that's what he does Chris 10 or 10 hacks into my brain and steals my ideas and then uses these ideas and tries to use them to control me and uses them against me and then puts them into other science scientific applications and they've made so much money off of me it's insane and synthetic telepathy and all this stuff has advanced because of what they've stolen from me and my brain. That's why they killed my father and kept his head alive. I'm not going to even go into what they did with that. But trust me, guys, I know. So then you have the connector Sith demon. You have the scavenger demon. Now, let me explain to you specifically what the scavenger demon does and why the cartel and why the U.S. government trash is very important to them. Trash is very important to them because of what they do with trash, especially my trash. I haven't taken my trash out to the corner for like... I don't know, about four weeks now because I know what they do to the trash because I had a theory of what they were doing to the trash. And through the listening to these wicked demons, because they're always in my head, because they're always attached to Chris Tim, you know? So they listen and, and it works two ways. You can listen to. So I've listened and learned. They have scavenger demons. A scavenger demon is very real. I looked it up. It goes through. What's a scavenger do? It's, it's filth. It lives in filth. It's a scavenger. It goes through your trash. But specifically, they're digital scavenger demons. One of the processes that it does, people, it'll... Go through your trash and get your scent and find out what trash is yours and then find out what barcode you purchased this food under and then take all this information and take these barcodes back to the witch or whoever and take portions of you know the rotted food back to the witch that's trying to curse you. This is what the process of what these witches and warlocks do around me. They use heavily the scavenger demons. It's the same process as a witch taking a lock of somebody's hair and then casting a spell on it. This is the process and this is why the, the trash industry, not to mention also um, the drug smuggling, body smuggling industry with, with the trash industry that comes along with the mafia who's the same people. They're all witches. So this is the spiritual aspect of smuggling trash. Right now I'm dealing with, with who I suspect to be a warlock because he's a lawyer. And we all know all lawyers in the United States you know, that are judges are Freemasons. So, if you're a Freemason, you're an alchemist. So, Mr. Caesar Augusta, who is on the lease of my house, this is how the demons have gained entrance to this house. Like, at will, through him. Because he is also on the lease of this house, because I couldn't lease this house without him co-signing. So I was coerced into um, a situation like this. So then he acted like he befriended me. And I had $70,000 of jewels from Laurel Aston and I wanted to go to California and sell them. He convinced me not to, said it was too dangerous and because of other things. And I'm not going to even get into pretty much like how he threatened me because he's like, well, my name's on the lease and you just can't leave the country. 
I'll have to report you, and who knows what's going to... I mean, he just got kind of psychotic, psychopathic, and I saw it. It was the first time I saw it. So I let this man go to New York with these jewels, and he gets back after a week, and he tells me there's no money. They're no good. Yeah, okay, demon. So he also runs a trash company, um, Rhea Tech. It's a Mexican garbage company. I found that out after after researching into him and started looking at the cartel and garbage. So I want you to understand that I suspect him of being a warlock and he uses the scavenger demons on, on me and Laurel Aston. I mean, that's what these demonic entities do. They set up these companies. Um... And they very well know how, how profitable a garbage company can be, especially with the barcode set up, especially being a witch and a warlock, and especially being a Freemason and part of the satanic Masonic cartel. It's all one big circle. So this is where the scavenger demon is heavily utilized, people. You can't even imagine. So, when I figured out about the trash, I can't tell you how things really, 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 really sped up. And when I stopped putting my trash out for these motherfuckers to pick up and then go through and then curse. And then all of a sudden, you know, I'm back at ground one and cursed again. I'm not kidding. So, let's see, what other, what other, you know, little other entities have they used? There's so many people, and, oh yeah, there's the Queen Sith, who I always deal with, the Blue Sith, she's blue. She's obsessed with me. And she was living in a container in my next door neighbor's um, house, Alberto. That's his job as an enforcer. And I think his girlfriend and his daughter are really tired of it um, because it, it's a Sith. Alberto, my next door neighbor, is a warlock. And the Sith, the blue Sith, the Sith Queen, was living next to me under his caretaking. The, the Queen is always close to me. They always have a Sith Queen. This is basically a hive. And the way the Sith Queen operates is she lives off filth. She lives off the filth and the essence of things around her. And then she is in communication with Echelon and Tempest. Echelon and Tempest are the calculating machines and the number machines for the Sith. And the Sith Queen. That's what they pretty much are designed to do is to protect the Sith and to cipher knowledge out of whoever and whatever they want to through synthetic telepathy and through the full cooperation of the American government. So, um, again, she can be killed by sanit sanitation. But I'm not going to really get into... Um, once you kill these things physically, they go into shadow, in the shadow realm. Um, that's some other ninja shit. <laughs> I'm not going to really get into that because m most people won't really understand the whole process of that unless you're, you know, a shadow killer, which I am. Um, but in the physical is the main part you need to focus on and what I can tell you is everything in the physical
can be made into shadow. For all you shadow killers, there's your answer on how to really kill a what an un, the undead or the dead that's undead in the shadow realm. So, um, another thing is they hack into your computer and they're always sending a signal through your computer whether it's hooked up or not to all the mechanisms and the SID that are still in your system. Now you gotta understand everyone is infected by a SID through chemtrails. That's why the government keeps doing it. That's nanotechnology and putting heavy metals in your body that get in your body and then crawl into your brain or wherever the SID programs them to do. Now, Echelon and Tempest are the programmers of chemtrails. Shut Echelon and um, Tempest down and they're done. That's it. If they don't have Echelon and Tempest, they're, they're through. Because Echelon and Tempest is designed to basically tell the chemtrails, the nano chemtrails, exactly what to do where to do it, who to attack, where to attack, where to shut down this, where to do this, and those are the computers that keep track of everybody and everything, and the brain mapping. And the U.S. government knows it. I mean, how much money a year do they spend on the chemtrails and the spraying? And basically just hacking into everyone's computer and through Wi-Fi and through low-end radio frequencies that, that the ear can hear, but you have to be trained to hear it, that is always communicating with, with your body, messing with your electromagnetic field. This is what the queen does, this is what the Sith does, this is what the chemtrails do. This is what GMO does. GMO is designed to interact with the chemtrails on a biological DNA level to try to alter your DNA or to try to hijack into your DNA to try to alter it. It's all a process, but it's all a process that's controlled by the Sith Queen, that's controlled by Echelon and Tempest. Now, I want you to understand, um, if you don't know much about Tempest, I'm going to get into basically how Tempest can jack into you anywhere. Tempest is designed to read electromagnetic energy. Now, what I mean by electromagnetic energy, that's your aura, people. Those are your brain waves. And through... Um, Things like brain gate. Brain gate is a system that they're trying to push on to humanity right now, and they're using it because they're saying, oh, it helps handicap people. Brain gate should never exist. It is one evil machine. The fact is, the CIA. And the U.S. government have taken a process of what they've done to assassins to control them, which is putting the microchip in the brain and then hooking the brain up to a computer and having that computer read your thoughts and then turning those thoughts into a binaural code, a binaural code that is deciphered and then that can be transferred back into a language, any language that they choose. This is brain gay. It's very real. This is what they're doing to everyone. Everyone. But this started with, with people like me. And now they're doing it with everyone. 
they don't want anybody, you don't have a private dog. So I want you to understand this is what the Sith are doing. So these things need to be taken down. Literally taken down. If they're not, I'm seriously worried about humanity's future because the U.S. government has been taken over by these things. The Sith operate, they're, they're parasites. That's all they are. When you look at the Stargate um, show on TV, the, 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 the number one problem was the Gua'u. But now they've taken attention off the Gua'u and supposedly the Gua'u are dead, but the Gua'u aren't dead. That's, that's why they started making other races in Stargate that are, you know, the problem. Because the Gua'u have already taken over earth or tried to pretty much and they've taken over the government and the government doesn't even know or maybe they do and they don't care there's a group that knows and like I said they're parasites they're like the goo they're the guo that's why they call them the guo earlier I told you the Chinese medicine um, poison is called goo do you think it's a coincidence that they're called Gu Au and the Chinese poison that is about mind control and sex slavery and slavery, mental slavery, is called Gu? So I want you to understand that these things that I'm talking about are very, very real. So I'm making this um, video for the scientists out there that are really trying to understand what's going on and understand that I've figured out exactly what they do. But the fact of the matter is with Tempest and Echelon and what these wicked things actually are doing to me, 247, they don't stop. Um, how they get at me. To so all the other agents that, that are around watching me, um, I want you to understand the process of all the cars driving past my house. They literally, um, with harp, harp is also a big part of this, they have harp technology. And these motorcycles, it's it's majority, every motorcycle that drives on this street, pretty much should be shot. They're all Hell's Angels or Weekend Warriors. Now, one of the things that I want you to understand is about sound pushing. I told you about synthetic telepathy. Now, I want you to understand that there's a process that these witches use called a demon's tongue. What is a demon's tongue? Well, say I'm saying, hello, how are you? Um, do you want to come to my house? And just in that sentence, I've made an overmasking of that sentence. If I say, hello, how are you? You want to come to my house? I've compressed a curse into that sentence. That's a devil's tongue. This is what these Freemasons and warlocks use on everybody. And again, let's go back to Lucas and his Star Wars films. When you see the, you know, the, the Jedis um, say something and then they wave their hand like it wipes the person's mind and, you know, they're under their control. That's the devil's tongue. So these, these scientists have taken, these evil scientists, and along with the Sith, have taken it a step further. See, when these motorcycles go past my house with all that loud noise, you know, they're throwing demonic curses at my house and trying to throw them into my head. And the same with their trucks. That's what they do. 
because it is all about sound. And when they get right past my house, right next to my window, you know, because the, the human mind is receptible to so much on a subconscious level. So again, if you are attached to nanotechnology, which everyone is now, through chemtrails and through GMO, then you take it a step further and you have these, these demons that are driving around in these cars. And they get paid to do this. They all live around me. So I want you to understand, even if you're on the streets and you're, you know, meet one of these heart cars drive by you, they hit you with a frequency that you can't see, you can't hear, but they hit your body with it and then they curse you. Whatever they want to curse you with, to make you weaker, to make you forget something, to make you, you know, if, if you want to help somebody, and then all of a sudden you start getting these ideas in your head, why I don't want to do this, why I don't want to do that. And then you say, oh, okay, that was a bad idea. And then your mind has changed and you don't really think twice about it. But that's what they do. This is how they create time shifts and shift time and force how they want things to go. Literally. I mean, this is, I'm talking about Gang stalking. This is what it is. So, I mean, you have the key maker, which is another warlock and a demon, that uses the, the gate demons. Now, a gate demon is very important to the CIA. If the CIA didn't have their gatekeepers, they would fall apart. The warlocks that are the, the gatekeepers of the gate demons specifically control the passages to in and out of the assets, which I'm an asset. They're the ones that have the old codes and write the new codes and give them to the demons and so on and stuff like that. And they all have to be approved with the queen. And I suspect they come from the Sith Queen. And then in the physical, the gatekeeper is the one that agrees and, all, and you know, puts his witchcraft into it too and his essence and does all the sacrificial shit with his family to make it strong in the physical because the, the Sith Queen doesn't sacrifice anybody. Everything is sacrificed and done to her. So these are the people that do these things. Every time that they want to write a really strong curse or do something really strong against me, it's a process. It's a process of the key maker doing the sacrificial ritual, sex orgies, whatever. And then, and then that goes over to the, the two CIA agents that live next to him across the street from me. The one, I don't know, the asshole in the uh, silver GMC um, car and his wife in the red VW bug or his girlfriend or whatever. They're both witches and they're both CIA drug dealers. So then the process goes over to them and they are the, the technical gatekeepers. What I mean by technical gatekeepers is they're the encoding. They'll take the curse or whatever is done by, by the original gatekeeper and then they will digitalize it. So then they digitalize it and the frequency that I was talking about that's going through your computer will go, that will go back to Echelon and Tempest and then that will be rebroadcasted re through my computer. It's just like this. This is gang stalking. And then the same code that they want to enforce and whatever they found out that they need to do 
because this trigger broke down, this trigger broke down, and this trigger needs to be instated, and we can't have him remember it or speaking about what I'm speaking about, which is the process of what they do. They, they make curses and things to lock down these parts of my mind. So if I try to talk about them, I'll get a, a electric shock or I'll stutter. That's why sometimes you'll hear me stutter because it is still a blocking mechanism. But my brain is starting to realize what has happened and it's not falling for it. So then after the, the digital encoding of, of these, you know, witches, warlocks, sits, it's passed to harp and the other guys driving by my house, which are their enforcers, their sound enforcers. Now what I mean, I was speaking about it earlier, is sound enforcing. Sound enforcing is very important to them because without it, they would be fucked. I mean, they put curses in the subconscious. They access old curses in the subconscious. They're always updating the subconscious through these sound curses because it's sound. Sound goes directly into the subconscious of the brain and the mind. So all of these, you know, cars driving by at night, really loud, and, you know, just shouldn't be on this street. I mean, shouldn't. I mean, I can't tell you, like, what happened all the time, and especially again tonight when, you know, one of these cars will drive by, and the cars are the physical curses. They're called, also they have their shooter demons. Now, let me explain to you about the shooter demons. First of all, let me talk about their um, MOVs. Their uh, unmanned robotical drones. It's a bird. A bird that's always around screeching, and you'll hear it start up. If for the agents listening, you'll hear them start up like always in the morning. And if you notice, they're nowhere else in Cancun other than around me. These are the gatekeepers basically for Echelon and Tempest. These are Echelon and Tempest. Um, biological entities which can be taken control by Chris 10 which you know pretty much controls them can take control of them anytime they want but they're on um, a artificial intelligence algorithm these birds and they're fucking demonic and evil as shit now these birds not only it can they're, they're digital. They shoot things out of their mouth. And they shoot a lot of things out of their mouth. Now, again, I want you to understand sound encoding. What I explained to you about the devil's tongue applies very much to anything that is sound. You'll hear a bird go chirp, 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 chirp. You know, do, do the little chirping. And within that chirping, is highly compressed digital encoding. Not kidding. Everything that, that, that comes out of that bird's mouth is encoding, either to reinforce a curse, to communicate with the CIA agents around me to give them new information. And actually, they understand it because bird calling is one of the, the standardized um, tactics that is taught in the CIA. So these guys can even do the same bird calls as these digital robotical birds and do a bird call back to them because theirs isn't digitally encoded or they can even have a, a, a digital encoder 
that will send a digital message along with their bird call back to the bird. This is, it's 2014, people. These are psychotic, psychopathic, gang stalker witches. I figured out everything that they've done to me. This is the only reason why I'm awake and not a sleeping asset. So then, I want you to understand that this bird shoots nanotechnology. Shoots it in my window. Okay? And somehow, they've created some way of these things passing through my window. I mean, the again, the window is not airproof. So whenever it shoots, hits the window, and then the little nano demon goes through the window. Not through the window, it finds a way in through the cracks of the window. Because, again, it's, it's, it's not airproof. And we're talking about nanotechnology. So I want you to understand that um, a thing that they call knocking. Knocking is a knock on the soul. Um, look it up. Read about it. The knock. In Freemasonry, um, it is I knock. Have you heard of I knock? And the whole Zimzima and open sesame. It's the same process, the same thing, and the same form of alchemy. But these birds, when things get really difficult and they need something delivered quick, and then you have the other drivers coming down the street passing new codes from Tempest with the harp cars, because they're always updating, because I'm always thinking. So here comes a car with the bird, it gives the bird the new encoding and the bird shoots the little new te nanotechnology because that's it's a shooter. Shoots the new nanotechnology at the window with the new encoding and here comes the goo demon and gets in my system and I have to deal with it. This is a process that's going on 247 and the reason why I woke up tonight is because they heavily did this tonight. They poisoned me big time. I mean, I got so sick when I was sleeping, I wanted to throw up. And then here come all of these cars, and it had to be like at least at 3.30, here comes a stream of cars to enforce and to throw the encoding into me through the new nanotechnology that was shot into my home by that bird. And, and while these cars drove by my house, I could feel myself literally getting sicker and sicker. Possibly this was an assassination attempt. I don't know. If I had stayed asleep, who knows what would have happened. But I woke up. I did my mental exercises and started a process of what I call mental clearing. And then I still ma managed to get sick, took some garlic pills, did what I needed to do to clear out my subconscious again. And, and you know, I'm recording this video. So I want you to understand the process of what they do. I mean, who... Who is going to believe literally what I'm saying unless you are a top scientist? That or, or, or you're, you know, a witch. Or you're one of them. But this is for, for the people that, you know, are going through this. So you can start to understand the process. Because once you start to understand the process of gang stalking and what they're actually doing... You have the ability to, to fight it. It's a spiritual battle, people. They're spiritual vampires. I mean, literally spiritual vampires. So even right now, as I record this video, my stomach is still sick. From, from the process of the scavenger, you know, 
being shot in by the bird, the scavenger going in. First place the scavenger goes is the kitchen, y'all. That's where all the barcodes are. That's where the food is that you ate. And, it's, and it does this little, you know, thing. It curses everything. And then the food that you ate that's in your system, it just somehow gets cursed and you get sick. This is the process of it. So I, again, the, they work on rules. And, you know, what I suspect is a warlock, Caesar Augusta, is on the lease of this house. And so this is the only reason why they let me move in this house. Hear the motorbike? That's one of them. And he just, you know, threw a, a Sith into the house and now it is trying to claw its way into the back of my mind. I can feel it. I can even hear them. You have to be highly trained and highly sensitive to do this. So, this is what they do. But let me tell you something, guys. Everything that you do is being recorded. Don't think that you cannot be seen. Everything can be seen. Have you heard of infrared, infra blue, and infra green? Hmm? Have you heard about the process that they've used? to document the human soul leaving the body when you die. There have been many evolutions in science, you stupid fucking warlocks. But you're too psychopathic and stupid to really even see what's about to happen to you. Because through satellite imaging, every fucking thing you do is documented. Everything, I can promise you that. And, and, and the things that are documented in this, they're not all human. I can promise you that too. So with your obsession of me, and with your obsession of your Sith Queen, with your psychopathic obsession with Mr. Lucas and the CIA and the NSA promoting the Sith and the number one promoters of the Sith. You've lost sight of the truth. And the truth is you're all fucking done. And the fact is you've programmed your computers to keep attacking me. And it just keeps getting worse on you. I mean, I just recorded a video explaining what you spent millions of dollars and millions of dollars to figure out what I've done. And I even pointed out that you will probably start attacking me even more to hack into me to figure out even more of what I didn't put in the video since you realized that I dove into my subconscious and you couldn't get into it and now you want it. So what you expect that, you know, your process of hacking and all of your stuff is going to, what did I say, cease? Well, actually they're psychopaths. We expect it to increase now. Because they are so obsessed with having their future. Well, I will tell you this, witches. You're fucking stupid. You're, the science that you've created, the things that you do, I mean, you're just thieves. Thieves. And thieves don't even have honor amongst themselves. That's the problem. You have no honesty, you have no foundation, and your foundation is stealing even from each other. But the fact of the matter is you steal from innocent, creative, highly intelligent people. And you don't even understand what you're stealing. But I will tell you this, everything that you steal from me, everything, has a digital, physical, 
spiritual and mental encoding that you will never able be able to touch or get rid of. So everything that you take from me will poison you and will eventually kill you. This is what I was born to do and designed to do. It is what the Chinese call a tiger trap, a rat trap. Give them something that they just want to sink their teeth into. It's like putting a piece of cheese in front of a fucking rat. You gotta take a bite. But every bite that you take will poison you and bring your foundation crumbling down. And if you can't see it, you're fucking blind and delusional, but that's expected because you're psychopathic. And then when you realize it, by the time you realize it, it's too late. It's too late. It's like you already took a bit of the bite of the apple. You know? That's why, you know, your logo is the bite of the apple from Apple, which the CIA owns Apple. That's why their logo is representative of the apple that Eve bit in the Garden of Eden and the, um, the forbidden fruit of knowledge. You can consider me the tree. Because if you don't know why the main number one killer of these things is garlic. Garlic is from, is from the roots of the, the tree of knowledge. That's why garlic kills fucking vampires and all these other things. And that's why purple garlic is, is said the best thing to kill goo poison. There's a reason for this. And it won't ever change. So don't forget about the roots. Because they often do because they have none. They are thieves. They don't even know the truth about where they come from because they are programmed with lies of liars to, to do one certain thing. And that is still, still the essence. Kill whoever they want to be killed so they can get information that they don't really understand and so they can feel supreme and like God. They're fucking psychopathic. And, and they're idiots. They don't even follow science. None of them. And then they get these Mexicans under mind control who don't know shit about shit doing their errands and, and people like Cesar Augusta who's a lawyer that thinks he's fucking smart that is just doesn't know shit about shit and takes me for 70 grand. Well, Cesar, I talked to your father. And I want you to know, everyone, um, if you follow my other videos, Caesar Augusta rented his father's apartment just to get his father's number down for me calling it because his apartment's right across the street. He turned it into an office. So obviously that told me this man's afraid of me talking to his father. Caesar's father's a doctor. He's a good man. So I'm sure Caesar got involved with the Mafia and I talked to his father. I told him the truth. Your son stole $70,000 from me. Caesar's father looks like a, the really, a good, nice man, but that will slap the shit out of you if you step out of line. And I'm pretty sure that's what Caesar did. Caesar's father has no need to work for the Mafia. Doctors don't work for the Mafia. Lawyers do. And that's a fact. So, I want you to understand what's going on, you know, in Cancun with these fucking gang stalkers and warlocks. Um, again, um, just scientists, it's all about frequency. That's all I gotta say, it's all about frequency. Nikola Tesla knew it. It's all about frequency. So make your concoctions, concoctions, oh yeah, and always keep them at a mixture of a higher octave. That's very important. 
very, very important. And for you that understand um, the Fibonacci sequence and numerology, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So never, never do things at the lower numerical octave. Always at the higher octave and, and they're done. It's the bottom line. They can't adapt to it. They can't do anything. It just poof. Because they're, they're low energy and low octaves. That's what they are. So it's as simple as that. So have fun, scientists. Um, and the bird is out there. I just heard him. So for you snipers, have fun. Peace.